Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. It's entirely possible that someone, sometime in your life, has called you stupid. It has happened to me twice today, and normally it was well-deserved. But sometimes, those that appear dumbest might in fact be the smartest guy in the room. Such is the crazy story of former U.S. Navy Petty Officer 2nd Class Douglas Hegdahl. Douglas Hegdahl was born on September 3, 1946, in Clark, South Dakota. Being from a small town, Douglas once joked with a reporter that he'd never been east of his uncle's Dairy Queen stand in Glenwood, Minnesota, or west of his aunt's house in Phoenix, Arizona. So when a military recruiter approached Douglas in the 60s, he saw an opportunity to see the world, answer the call, and join the United States Navy. He began his service in 1965 when he was sent to San Diego for boot camp. He was then assigned to the USS Canberra, a missile cruiser positioned in the Gulf of Tonkin, three miles off the coast of Vietnam. On April 6, 1967, Douglas was just finishing his 1 a.m. shift when he was blown overboard by one of the large surface-mounted guns on the ship. Whoops! His shipmates did not report him missing for two days. Having fallen overboard with no life preserver and no identification, Douglas was assumed to be dead, and the crew even held a memorial for him. What they didn't know was that he had floated for 12 hours until Cambodian fishermen found him and brought him to shore. Once he arrived in Vietnam, Douglas was turned over to Vietnamese militiamen and was taken to Hoa Lo Prison, also known as the Hanoi Hilton. The interrogators at Hanoi Hilton did not believe Douglas's story about being knocked overboard and insisted he was a CIA agent. Rather than give up information to his captors, Douglas pretended to be an illiterate fool. When he was instructed to write anti-war statements against the U.S., he agreed, but pretended to be unable to read or write. The Vietnamese were shocked, but thought they had found the perfect candidate who was gullible enough to be tricked into publicly supporting their cause. They assigned someone to teach Douglas to read and write. But when he appeared incapable of learning altogether, his captors gave up on him. He became known as the Incredibly Stupid One, Deemed non-threatening, he was given free reign of almost the entire camp. Hegdahl said that, I found my best defense posture was just to play dumb. Let's face it, when you fall off a boat, you've got a lot to work with. During his time at the Hanoi Hilton, Douglas was given the task of sweeping prison grounds. He used this as an opportunity to do what he could to thwart the Vietnamese. When no one was looking, he once filled five army trucks' gas tanks with dirt and leaves so they would not operate. Douglas would also take advantage of his freedom within the camp, often passing notes and communications with other prisoners as he swept. His most amazing accomplishment, however, was saving the lives of hundreds of prisoners of war and providing a wealth of information about Hoa Lo Prison to the United States. Douglas had a remarkable memory and was able to memorize the names of prisoners, the dates they were captured, the dates they arrived at the prison, and other personal information. And he did this all using the nursery rhyme, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, as a mnemonic device, and he memorized over 250 prisoners' names. When the Vietnamese decided to release three prisoners from the camp, Douglas didn't want to go. The captured American soldiers had made a no-go-home-early pact in which they agreed they would all go home together or not at all. But Douglas was ordered by his commanding officer to return home and ordered to share the valuable information he had acquired at Hoa Lo, and was thus released with two other POWs on August 5, 1969. Back in the United States, Douglas provided names of military and intelligence personnel who were thought to be deceased. His global impact came when he confronted the Vietnamese at the Paris Peace Talks in 1970. The information Douglas provided, including the locations and horrible conditions of prison camps, as well as the torture practices used by the Vietnamese, were finally shared with the world. Exposing the Vietnamese this way led them to keep POWs alive until the war was over, saving hundreds of prisoners. To quote the man himself, he said, That was the thing I was probably most proud of. It was to change the status of quite a few people from MIA to POW. History is littered with stories of true heroes doing incredible things under terrible circumstances.
and if U.S. Navy Petty Officer Second Class Douglas Hegdahl can remember 250 names, then surely we can remember his.